Welcome to Capital Baptist Church and welcome to our message today. Today we're going to be talking about quenching your spiritual thirst. And in case we haven't met, my name is Steve Reynolds. I'm the lead pastor at Capital, and I want to welcome you today uh, to this very important message. This message today on quenching your spiritual thirst is part of a series called Words from the Cross. Words from the Cross. And the Bible tells us that Jesus hung on the cross for six hours. Six hours he hung on the cross from 9 a.m. to 3 uh, p.m. And during those six hours, he made seven different statements. And today we're going to look at the fifth of those statements. And it's the shortest statement, the shortest statement that Jesus made on the cross. And that is, I thirst. That was the statement, I thirst. Thirst. So I'm excited about sharing this message with you today as we think about how that Jesus Christ, honestly, I mean, you know, the one that literally created uh, water uh, was thirsty. And, you know, he thirsted for you. He thirsted for me so that ultimately he could quench our spiritual thirst. And today maybe you're thirsty. Maybe uh, you are sensing uh, dissatisfaction uh, in your life. And I'm excited about sharing with you how that Jesus can quench your spiritual uh, thirst. So today we're talking uh, about water. And so I thought I would uh, just uh, think about a little bit here with you uh, water and the importance uh, of it. It's so good to drink water. And the reason we drink uh, water is it quenches our physical thirst, our physical thirst. Thirst, And so I'm a big proponent of encouraging people uh, to drink uh, plenty uh, of water. And I just want to encourage you today, you know, I'm going to talk about the spiritual thirst, but what about your physical thirst and the importance of, of drinking uh, water? You know, I think one of the most important things that points out the importance of water is that you go back to Genesis chapter 1, uh, 1 and 1, 2. I mean, the very beginning of the Bible. And here's what the Bible says in Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I mean, this world and everything in it was created by God. But then you go to the next verse. It's easy to miss the next verse, and particularly 1.2b. And there the Bible says that the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. The Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And then verse number three says, God said, let there be light, and there was light. You know, it's important to note, there was never a day of creating water. I mean, I mean you got Genesis 1-1, a general statement, and then Genesis 1-3, the first day, creating light. But you know, God, he, he didn't really have a, a, a statement where he created water. I mean, the, I mean, water was already there, so to speak. And the reason for that is water is the very foundation, the very foundation of life. And, you know, we can't live without water. And God knew that, you know what, I'm just going to have it there, okay? It's, it's the foundation. It's the, it's the bottom line. And uh, so you were made uh, to drink water. In fact, our bodies are more water, more H2O than anything else. You are mainly water. I am mainly water. And you know what? We can't get dehydrated. We have to keep ourselves hydrated. So I want to encourage you, listen, some people say, well, I don't like water. Well, I mean, I understand maybe you don't like water, but your body uh, that God de designed demands that you drink water. So that's a little health tip as we start today. Uh, but I just felt it was important because, you know, Jesus refers to himself as water, you know. So if he's using such a powerful illustration, again, maybe it reminds us of the importance of, of drinking water. I'll take one more sip, and then we'll get into the spiritual aspect today. So today we're going to be here in Genesis chapter uh, 19. I want to read uh, this passage to you, Genesis uh, 19, 28 through 30a as today we talk about quenching your spiritual thirst. So here it is in John chapter 19, uh, 28 through 30a, the Bible says this, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, 
that the scripture might be fulfilled, listen, said, I thirst. There it is, the shortest statement. There's seven statements Jesus made on the cross. It's only two words, okay, the shortest one. I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it in his mouth. And so when Jesus had received the sour wine. So for every one of these statements, if you've been with me in this series, uh, you know that I come up with like a little pithy statement uh, to describe each, each one of these. You see, in John uh, chapter 19, verse 28, that's our key verse. I want to read it to you again. It says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, I thirst. So my pithy statement for this statement is this. John 19, 28 uh, contains words of thirst. Words of thirst. And what Jesus is going to do is he's going to use the illustration of a physical thirst, and then he's going to tie it into a spiritual thirst and how he can quench our spiritual thirst. So with that in mind, let's talk about this. And I remind you that in this series, we're talking about this from two perspectives. One is from the perspective of Jesus. What did the statement mean to Jesus in, in real time, in real context? And then we're talking about how does it relate to us? How can we apply it uh, to our lives? So first of all, let's talk about what this statement meant to Jesus in real time and in real context. And there are four aspects of this. Number one, uh, Jesus, through this statement, uh, was given a fulfillment of prophecy. A fulfillment of prophecy. You see, in John 19, 28, Jesus, the Bible makes it clear here, says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, listen, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So I want you to note that statement, that the scripture might be fulfilled. You see, there are many, many uh, Bible prophecies that Jesus fulfilled uh, during this time of these statements, all right? And I've been trying to point this out to you every single uh, week. And once again, this statement, I thirst, was part of a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Because in Psalm 69, 21, the Bible says, They also gave me gall for my food, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. In other words, uh, again, about a thousand years earlier, think about this, about a thousand years earlier, it was prophesied that this would happen as Jesus was on uh, the cross. And so he is going to fulfill the scripture, it says here. And then secondly, Jesus' uh, physical humanity. I mean, real time, real context. I mean, this is about Jesus and, and once again sharing that he indeed was the God Man, 100% God, 100% uh, man, and here he's going to cry out something. Honestly, it's really remarkable. I thirst. I thirst. And what we see from that is that Jesus, the Bible says, took on flesh, right? Uh, you know, God with us. Emmanuel means God with us. God came from heaven. Jesus, he took on flesh. And as we talked about before, he gave up what we call his, some of his non-moral attributes. Jesus never gave up his moral attributes. He was totally pure. He was totally sinless. But he did give up some of his, what we call, non-moral attributes. And here is an indication of that. Again, the one who created refreshing water, okay? Uh, the one that created, uh, you know, water, he himself got thirsty. Just think about that. And it's important to understand the, the humanity uh, of Jesus because the Bible says in 1 John 4, 2 through 3, by this you know the Spirit of God. Listen, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. You see, some people want to kind of like spiritualize that Jesus came. They don't, they don't understand, they don't accept that he physically came, okay? He physically came, he physically lived. It's very, very important to understand 
and, and uh, realize this. Because the Bible says that, that, you know, every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh, listen, is of God, is of God. And so Jesus here is expressing physical humanity. And then thirdly, Jesus' sacrifice for sin. Jesus' sacrifice uh, for sin. In John 19, uh, verse uh, number 29, it says, Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. Now, the thing I want to point out to you here that's so important uh, is that this is a a, a picture of the sacrifice of sin. You see, they used a hyssop. They used a hyssop. This is really, really important. Because if you go back to the Old Testament, in Exodus chapter 12, verse number 22, you remember how that God was going to come and, and he was going to provide, uh, give judgment. And the Bible tells us in Exodus, 20, Exodus 12, verse 22, and listen to what God says, and you shall take a bunch of hyssop, there it is, hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that's in the basin. And none of you, listen to this, none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. You see, the death angel was going to come through. You know, I, I don't have time to unload, uh, unpack that whole story. I, I hope you know at least a little bit of it. But the bottom line is God was going to protect uh, his people and uh, the children of Israel. And he told them, take the hyssop, use the hyssop. And they had sacrificed the lambs and they were to take the, the, the blood of the lambs and they put it across the top of the doorpost and down on the sides, okay, the lintel, and then down on the sides of the doorpost, using the hyssop. And so it's by design, okay, by God's design, that they use a hyssop to deliver uh, this uh, to uh, Jesus. And so this is something we see here, real time, real context. And then lastly, uh, Jesus' commitment to finish. His commitment to finish. You see, Jesus is about to finish, all right? <laughs> uh, praise the Lord, amen? Uh, Jesus is about uh, to finish. In fact, that's what's coming up next. It is finished. And you know, earlier he had been offered uh, something to drink. I'll, I'll just uh, read that in Matthew uh, chapter 27. Earlier Jesus had been offered uh, something to drink, but listen, he refused it. So you go over to, and some people get these confused, that's so why I want to explain this, all right? So in Matthew 27, earlier it says, in verse 33, and when they had come to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, place of a skull, listen to this, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. All right, so they gave him sour wine, they offered this to him, uh, sour wine uh, with gall to drink. But listen, but when he had tasted it, he would not drink. So you got to understand, earlier Jesus had been offered something to drink. He's going to accept a little bit now, okay? Something different, more like, more like vinegar or whatever. But basically what we learn from that is, you know, this was a common thing for the Roman soldiers to offer uh, this to uh, people that were being crucified. Basically, it was a sedative to help them deal with the pain. And so Jesus earlier had been asked, okay, you know, you want some of this, and he refused it, okay? I mean, there's a lot to see there. Jesus, you know, he took the full weight of pain, all right? He didn't want any sedative, okay? Yeah, you know, he took it, you know, he took it into his body, our sin. He took the physical, uh, uh, you know, treatment that he was given, the, the excruciating torment, uh, that, and he refused to drink anything. But here the Bible says in verse 30, so when Jesus had received the sour wine, and, and really what this is more like, the, this is a point where it's more like vinegar, okay? That's why Psalm 69 actually uses the word vinegar, okay? And, and now it says he just takes a little bit of it uh, to uh, his, his lips. And the reason he did that was, I mean, he has, listen, he hasn't had anything to drink, probably, or eat for that matter, for like over 24 hours, all right? And he's gone through all kinds of things, all night trials, all night 
uh, you know, beatings and everything else, and he's been on the cross for, you know, uh, a, a period of time, hours, and, and now he's, he's getting ready to say, it is finished, and he's going to say it with a loud voice. And so I believe he just took a little bit just to, you know, just to moisten his parched lips and, and, and perhaps his parched throat, all right? But it's a, it shows his commitment to finish. He knew he was going to finish, and he wanted to finish well. And what was his purpose to finish? Luke 19.10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That was his mission. That was his purpose. And he's about to say, I'm finished with this, okay? I'm finished with this. And, and, and that was his purpose, and, and he was committed to finish and to finish well. So what did this mean to Jesus, all right? Re real time, real context. It was a fulfillment of prophecy, his physical humanity, uh, his sacrifice for sin, and his commitment to finish. Now, let's talk about what does this mean to us? I mean, what's, what, what has this got to do uh, with how you live your life tomorrow? <laughs> what, what has this got to do with your, your personal self? Okay, let, let's talk about this. So here's the big idea, and I already mentioned it earlier, and I want to mention it uh, real clear here, okay? Here's the bottom line. Jesus thirsted so that we could find satisfaction and never have to thirst anymore. Let me read that again. This is so huge, all right? Jesus thirsted. Jesus thirsted so that we could find satisfaction and never have to thirst any more. Praise God. You see, he wanted us to find satisfaction. He, he didn't want us to go through life thirsty. He, he provides the satisfaction. He quenches our spiritual thirst. In fact, in John chapter 7, 37 through 39, it says, on the last day, and uh, so this is the last day of what's called the Feast of the Tabernacles. And this is huge as far as attendance. I mean, there, there are probably many, many thousands there. And it's the last day. It's the great day of the feast. I mean, this is going to wrap, it, wrap things up. And Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone thirsts, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. I mean, just imagine the backdrop and the crowd that's there, and Jesus delivers this message. Is anybody thirsty, okay? Is anybody thirsty? And he says, listen, if you're thirsty, come to me. He's not talking about physical drink. He's talking about spiritual drink. And he says in verse 38, if you believe in me, okay, out of your heart is going to flow rivers of living water, okay? You, you want to have life, <laughs> real life, living water? Uh, come to the fountain. Come to Jesus. And then in verse 38, he talks about not just himself, but how the Spirit of God, and we're going to talk about this uh, in a little bit here, okay, how that the Holy Spirit is part of that, that quenching of thirst. And he says, you know, uh, the Spirit hasn't come yet, you know. Uh, the Bible tells us that when Jesus went up, he said the Holy Spirit's going to come down. And that happened in Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. And so he says here, when it comes to the Spirit, he says, you know, the Holy Spirit hasn't been given uh, because I haven't been uh, glorified. So the Holy Spirit, we're going to talk about today, plays a vital role in quenching your spiritual thirst. So again, Jesus thirsted so we could find satisfaction and never have to thirst anymore. Now, let's talk about how to get your spiritual thirst. How can you quench it? Okay? How can you quench your spiritual thirst? Number one, Know why you thirst. Know why you thirst. You see, all of us, 
get thirsty, right? I'm talking about not just physically thirsty. Of course we all get physically thirsty. But we also get spiritually thirsty. Why is that? Why is that? Well, number one, because you thirst because of sin. We all thirst because of sin. You see, we have a a broken relationship with God. God is perfect. God God is holy, okay? Uh, But we thirst because of that broken relationship uh, with God. You know, we, we try to live life on our own apart from, from God, and, and we, we never find any satisfaction, okay? We, we never find any satisfaction uh, because uh, we're, we're not connected to the, to the water uh, of life, uh, Jesus. And, and we thirst because of sin. There's an illustration of this in John chapter 4, 13 through 18, and it's a famous story. It's called the women at the well. And, and, and Jesus comes and he ministers to this woman. And it says in John 4, verse 13, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. So they're at a well, okay, a physical well. And Jesus said, you know what? Anyone who drinks this physical water, they're going to get thirsty again, right? I mean, when I drink this, this water, yes, it helps me out short term. But I'm going to thirst again. And then he uses that illustration to point to verse number 14, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. He's talking about physical water. Hey, you drink that water, you're going to thirst again. But he tells her, listen, if you drink of this water, Water, I'm going to tell you about here, okay? You'll never thirst again. Praise God. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, okay? Give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. And Jesus begins to talk to her. And she, she was looking for satisfaction. And she was trying to find it in a, in a husband, in a, in a husband. And, you know, it's really important. Just let me just share with you, you know, Marriage is wonderful, okay? I'm, I'm all for marriage. Of course, I'm for marriage, you know. But the bottom line is, you know, it's very dangerous to marry someone thinking, wow, I'm going to marry them. They're going to they're gonna meet all my needs, and they're going to satisfy me. And, and yes, praise God, marriage can provide some of those needs and some of those satisfactions. But listen to me, no human being can meet your deepest needs. You know, a, a great marriage involves two people falling in love with Jesus, okay, living for Jesus, putting Jesus first and meeting in Jesus, okay, and, 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 and trying to serve one another and help uh, one another. And she was going after uh, a husband uh, to try to meet this need. In fact, uh, the Bible says uh, that she had had five husbands, five husbands, I mean, she was just going from one man uh, to another. And Jesus was showing her because of her sin, that wasn't going to work, okay? So the first reason why you thirst and why I thirst as well is you thirst because of sin. A second reason you thirst is because the things of this world do not bring satisfaction. Let me say that again. So so many times we, we turn to the things of this world to find our satisfaction. We, we turn to, you know, relationships. Uh, you know, that woman was turning to relationships. We, we turn to power. We turn to money. We turn to, you know, possessions. We, uh, you know, people look uh, all over the place you know, with, for, you know, for that sense of satisfaction, maybe through uh, drugs or, 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 or who knows, okay? There's so much out there uh, to, to entice us uh, to, to try to find uh, satisfaction. But the Bible says in Jeremiah 2.13, For my people have committed two evils. Listen to this. My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn themselves cisterns, listen to this, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Wow, what a powerful picture there, okay? Uh, you, you know, God is saying, you, 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 you've committed two evils. Evil number one is, you've forsaken me. I mean, he is the, the source of, uh, of living water. He's the source of, of satisfaction. And then you've turned to the world to try to provide 
satisfaction in your life, but, but you know, cisterns are like pots, and he says, you know, you, 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 you look to that, but those pots, those things of this world are, are cracked, you know, okay, and the water uh, is leaking out of them. And that's exactly, okay, that's exactly what we do sometimes. So number one, no. If you're, you're thirsty today, I want you to think about, okay, know why you're thirsty. Is it because of sin in your life? Is it because you're looking to the world uh, to satisfy you? It's really important if you're going to get your spiritual thirst quenched that you really examine yourself to know that. And then secondly, come to Jesus and drink. Come to Jesus and drink. You see, he is coming to us and listen, he says, do are, 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 you have a, a drought in your life? Okay, are, are you spiritually dry uh, in your life? He says, come to me. In uh, Revelation 22, uh, 17, I love this. It says, and the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts, come. And I love this, whoever, whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. The invitation is universal, okay? The invitation is universal. He is inviting everyone to come. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter uh, your, your, your income. It doesn't matter uh, your ethnic uh, life or whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, this water is for everybody. And then listen, drinking means two things, believing in Jesus and receiving the Holy Spirit. And, and, and these two go hand in hand. You see, when you believe in Jesus, the Bible says the Holy Spirit becomes a resident in your life. The very moment of salvation, the Bible says we're baptized in the Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit. And so first of all, think about believing in Jesus. In John 6, 35, it says, and Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Okay, that's another illustration uh, there uh, of, of who Jesus is. And if you turn to Jesus, the bread of life, it says, he who comes to me shall never hunger. So that's another uh, image, another analogy, another picture of Jesus, the bread of life. But then he says, he who believes in me shall never thirst. He who believes in me shall never thirst. So if you want to have your spiritual thirst quenched, believe in Jesus. That means put your trust in Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Believe means to trust Him as the one and only way to heaven. And then when you do that, the Holy Spirit becomes a resident uh, in your life. And what you have to learn to do is to what's called walk in the Spirit. What does that mean? That means not only is the Holy Spirit a resident in your life, to walk in the Spirit means the Holy Spirit is, a, is the, listen, the president of your life. It's one thing for you to have the Holy Spirit. It's another thing for the Holy Spirit to fully have you. And as we learn to submit to the Spirit, as we learn to obey the Spirit of God, here's what the Bible says, we will then have the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians 5, 22 uh, through 23, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Listen to this. Joy. Listen to this. Peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against us, there is no law. I mean, just think about it. In the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, we have the fruit of the Spirit. And just look at those first three, love, joy, and peace. I mean, isn't that what we all want? I mean, don't we all want love? Don't we all want joy? Don't we all want peace? Listen, it's found in the Holy Spirit. Are you walking in the Spirit? Are you obeying the Spirit? Are you doing what God told you to do? Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus and drink. He will thirst. He will quench your thirst. The Holy Spirit will come into your life. And, and the Holy Spirit will provide for you the fruit of the Spirit. And then lastly, I love this, enjoy satisfaction for eternity. You know, it's great to live life on this earth and have your spiritual thirst quenched. But the good thing to look forward to is, you know, in heaven, uh, we're never going to thirst again. But before we think about heaven, let's think about hell. You know, one of the worst things about hell 
is there's the, you're never going to have your, your thirst quenched, okay? Your, your physical or your spiritual thirst. Listen to Luke 16, 24. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus. So this is like a, you know, words from hell, if you will. Okay, talking about words from the cross, our series, this, these are words from hell. And listen to what it says, the, the cry from hell, the, the man in hell. Dip, listen to this, dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. I mean, horror, hell's going to be a horrible place, a place of torment. And one of the things about hell is, is your thirst will never be quenched, physically or spiritually. So let me ask you something. Have you asked Jesus to save you? Because he, the word, the very idea of being saved is saved from hell. Do not go into eternity without Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I, listen, I pray, oh God, may nobody watching today the end up in hell. Nobody listening today end up he in hell. But please, Lord, help everyone uh, to be saved. Because listen, there is no thirst in heaven. Praise God, there is no thirst. I mean, hell is a place of thirst. But listen, there is no thirst in heaven. Revelation 7, 16 says, they shall neither hunger anymore, listen to this, nor thirst anymore, nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. You know, heaven is going to be awesome, you know. It's going to be awesome. And there's going to be so many wonderful things about heaven. But one thing is this, you're never going to thirst again. You know, as we're on this earth and we're struggling with sin and, and we're struggling with the things of this world, uh, you know, drawing us away. And, 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 and listen, we, co we come to Jesus. That, that's what we got to do, come to Jesus and receive him as Savior, and in doing so, receive the Holy Spirit. But listen, praise God, we, you know, we have something to look forward to, and that is heaven. That is heaven. Listen, water is great. Praise God for water. He quenches our spirit, uh, physical thirst. But listen to me, Jesus said, I thirst. And he thirsted so that you could never thirst again. Praise God.